Hi, I'm Kevin Hildebrand. In this video, I'll talk about some ideas for organists for specific parts of Divine Service Setting 1 in Lutheran Service Book. Let's start at the beginning with the Kyrie. We need only a simple registration of eights and fours. And perhaps a important factor to consider is how long will we hold that last chord? Maybe only one or two beats is all that's necessary. One, two, off. And the next one, likewise. That way we can maintain this dialogue between pastor and congregation by not holding on to that last chord excessively long. The Kyrie goes right into the hymn of praise. Let's talk about the Gloria in Excelsis first. On this canticle, we don't want to rush. We have a number of 16th notes in the melody for the congregation to maneuver. Perhaps a metronome marking of about 76 for the quarter note would be appropriate. We want to watch the 16th notes in this canticle. If we're going too fast, those 16th notes are going to be rushed for the singers. Listen also to the bass line in the pedals to let that maintain a steady pulse for you. And we'll play this on a full registration of principles. Perhaps a mixture or a reed would be appropriate on your instrument also. You can hear that bass line leading us gently along. The other option for the hymn of praise is this is the feast. Now we'll need a short introduction for that. Either a longer phrase maybe even on a solo stop like a solo trumpet would work. or even the very first half of that phrase. Whatever we use for an introduction, we want to make sure that the next downbeat is clear in the bass in order to prepare the congregation to get ready to sing that refrain. This is how that might work. Then we want to make sure we have a solid downbeat as we begin playing the canticle. We want to make sure, again, that we don't rush the tempo. It's easy, if you're playing too fast, to turn that dotted rhythm on victory into something that sounds like two eighth notes. We want to avoid that and maintain that dotted rhythm, perhaps separating the notes in that dotted rhythm on victory would help. Let's move over to the Alleluia's prior to the Gospel. Again, we'll need a short introduction to make sure that the congregation is ready to sing. Perhaps let's play that last set of Alleluia's to introduce it.
Increasing the registration on that last set of alleluias with a mixture or a reed might be an appropriate thing to do as well. The gospel acclamations need to be crisp and bright. We want to maintain that rhythm on glory to you and have that very crisp like this. Those first three chords, which are identical, can be detached slightly in order to keep that rhythm crisp. Likewise, in the closing acclamation, we could have a little bit of separation between those first two chords. Notice a little bit of separation between those first two chords help to accomplish that. Now let's move over to the offertory. Be careful that we don't play it too quickly, even though the melody is notated primarily in eighth notes. Like we have done with the Gloria, we want to use the bass line as a model for a steady pulse. And a little bit of introduction is necessary. Perhaps this very last uh, couple of measures would work. Next we have the service of the sacrament. This begins very similarly to the Kyrie at the beginning of the service of the word. Like the Kyrie, we want to maintain this dialogue between pastor and congregation. A light registration would be appropriate. And again, taking care not to hold that last chord excessively long would be helpful. One or two beats is all you need. One two, off. And likewise the next one. Now in contrast to that light registration, the Sanctus, which follows, can have the biggest registration that we use. It's the musical high point of the liturgy. So something with principles, mixtures, even coupling some reeds down, and having a full solid pedal will make this a very appropriate registration. details. First, no introduction is necessary. In fact, an introduction would be out of place here. Also, a slight broadening of the tempo in that last Hosanna in the highest would be very appropriate. Moving into the Agnus Dei, like the offertory, it's notated in primarily eighth notes, but we don't want to rush the tempo. Like many of the other canticles in this setting, let the bass line be our pulse. Following the Lord's Supper, there's two musical options for the post-communion canticle. First, thank the Lord. A short introduction 
based on the first measure or so would be all that we need. Or maybe something a little fuller. The other option, the Nuke Dimittis, is a little more relaxed. It needs to be slightly slower in a deliberate tempo. There's a lot of text that needs to be sung, and we can't let that be rushed. A quieter registration with eights and fours would be helpful. If this canticle is less familiar to the congregation, even soloing out the melody on one manual may be helpful. Some overall considerations in the service include if you have short responses like amens after the collect or the pax domini or the benediction or other short responses, it's okay for those to be spoken and not sung if the pastor is not chanting his part. And finally, organists who may find this musical setting still quite challenging should be aware of a simplified version of this music which was prepared by the composer Richard Hillert and is available from Concordia Publishing House. Those are some ideas to help you in your playing of this divine service setting week in and week out. Be sure to watch our other videos with more ideas for hymn and service playing. Thanks for watching.